Hey guys, what's going on? It's Blade again from Cardio Security, and today we're back with another product review. Now, it's been a little while since our last one. I think it's been about four or five weeks at least. So we're back again with a brand new product from Sony. This is the XAV 9550 ES. This is their flagship ES, meaning elevated standard, floating capacitive HD screen that you can put in your vehicle. All the bells and whistles, so let's get into it. Right, so we have the contents of the box in front of me. We're gonna quickly go through the small contents and then we'll get into the head unit. So first of all, the most important bit, and I know it's the boring part that no one ever gets into, the instructions. Now, it's quite important you go through this and it does look a bit daunting. There's quite a lot of paperwork here, but you do have different languages in these booklets, so you don't need to worry too much, but mainly just go through this, read up about the head unit. So if you do get stuck, you know where to look. Next, you have this plug here. So this is your inputs and outputs plug. This goes into the back of the head unit, this white plug here. And then you have all of your connections. These are all RCA connections. This is where your pre-outs will be. So your outputs for front, rear and subwoofer. And these are all five volt pre-outs on this head unit. You'd also have three camera inputs into this head unit. So these are the three yellow connections. One, two, and three, those three there. And then you've got, yeah, like I say, you've got fronts, rears, and sub. Next, we have the microphone. So standard issue, Sony Bluetooth mic, jack on one end, and then you've got the microphone, which is normally put up by the headliner or onto the cowling for the steering wheel somewhere where it's easily spoken into, you're not gonna get loads of wind noise. Next, you have these two plastic brackets. Now they are to basically finish off the back of the head unit. So when you look behind it, it doesn't look like metal frameworks essentially. Next you have the USB-C connection cable. So this will be plugging into the back of the head unit. And then you'll have the female connection routed around to your glove box or center armrest, wherever you want that to be put. You've got, I believe about 1.5 meters of length on this. Next, you have a GPS antenna. Now, this is very important that this is installed, otherwise your wireless CarPlay or Android Auto will not work. So this plugs into the back of the head unit, the gray connector there, and then this will be up on the dash. So you can either put it physically on the dash on view, or you can put it under the dash as long as there's no metal work on top of that. So you can put it on top of the head unit or on top of some bracketry that's behind the head unit there. And then lastly, for the small bits and bobs, you have your small bits and bobs. You've got the removal keys to take the cage that comes with the stereo off. You've got some silver screws, some black screws, and one singular silver screw. Right, let's get into the head unit. Okay, so let's get into the meat and gravy of the head unit. So you've got a 10.1 inch capacitive HD display with this unit. So 10.1 inches across of screen, and then you have the bezel around the outside. This unit has physical buttons along the top, which is something new. None of the other manufacturers have done this yet. So something a little bit different. So you've got your volume and home buttons and whatnot along the top of the unit. This is an anti-glare display as well. So as you can probably see, I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's uh, almost slightly matted the screen, but it reduces a massive amount of sun glare coming in from the vehicle. Uh, you have full adjustment on tilt, and height, side to side, and up and down. You've got loads of adjustment in terms of the screen, which is all on the brackets behind, which we'll get into in a second. Now this unit, in terms of specs, you've got wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. You've got Bluetooth streaming, hands-free calls, DAV radio. You've got a built-in 14-band EQ and an 8-band parametric EQ. And you can stream up to 24 bits in audio quality using a high-res device. So this is perfect for anyone that's looking for something that's fantastic audio quality, but also having a massive screen. The last few bits, this unit, as I've mentioned already, can take up to three camera inputs. So you could have a reverse camera, a front camera, and then another reverse camera if you wanted. So you can have one up high, one down low, and then the front. We could have one up front and two either side. You can have many options for that. 
This also has the standard Sony quick wake up feature. Now, it can become quite annoying sometimes when you get into the car, you just wanna start listening to music straight away. Some other head units will take a while to turn on. This has the standard Sony quick wake up feature, which they've had on quite a few of their units have passed. Uh, this has that, so it's nice and easy. Turn it on, turns on straight away. It's very, very quick. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just quickly walk you through the user interface, how the unit works, what you can do, the different features and stuff like that. So let me come around and I'll show you how that works. So we have the unit here. So when you turn it on, this is the screen that you'll come to. This is your main home screen. So these are your quick functions down the bottom here that you can see. So you've got your normal FM radio, your DAB radio, your Bluetooth audio, your Bluetooth phone, and then your settings. And if you tap over here, you've got your other applications or other sources that you can use, which is your USB, your rear camera, camera one and camera two. As I've said, but you've got three camera inputs on this, shows you all the devices that are connected to the stereo. So if we close that, let's say we wanna go into the radio. We'll go here. This is your main radio screen. So you can then tune into a station that you like. We don't have an aerial connected, so it's not gonna find anything. But let's just say, for instance, we want that channel there. You can then preset that over here by pressing and holding. And then that is a preset. You have multiple presets that you can choose. I believe it's 15 presets. One, two, three, four, five, six, 15 or 18 presets, something like that. And then you've got FM, AM, and then you've got a manual tune button. So if you want to manually tune yourself, you can tap it like that. Or if you want it to auto tune, turn that off and then it will auto tune to the next available station. You've got settings up here for the radio, which you can turn traffic announcements and bits and bobs like that on and off. If we go back, we can then press our home button and then that'll take us back to the home. So it's the same concept with DAB. Obviously the DAB is gonna try and search for the nearest mast and give you the best reception it can. Again, we don't have an uh, aerial connected to this, but obviously it's the same kind of concept. The DAB is gonna show you the station that you're on. So let's say it's BBC Radio 1 Extra, for instance. And then you can preset that over here. And again, you've got 15 to 18, uh, 18 presets. This will also show you here your signal. So if you get three bars, you've got very good signal. Again, you've got settings up here, which you can turn the antenna power, announcements and bits and bobs like that on and off. Also, you have a list. So this will give you a station list everything you've got available, so you can choose from there so you don't have to seek to actually find the stations. Now, Bluetooth is obviously for your, your hands-free and for your music streaming. So this is your music streaming, this is your hands-free. If you download your contacts, that will give you all your contacts on this screen here. There we are. And then this will be for your normal music streaming if you're not using CarPlay or Android Auto. Now the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. Obviously USB, if you plug a USB into the USB-C connection, then you'll get your USB audio. If you're playing like a stick or something like that with some high-res files on there. And then the rear camera will show you your rear camera if that's powered on. So as you can see, the user interface, if you've used the Sony or looked at a Sony before, it's very, very familiar, very, very simplistic and very easy to use. Um, with this capacitive screen and also being anti-glare, it's very touch responsive and also very quick. And I've said very a lot of times, but it's, that's the way it is. It's a very, very good head unit. So you have lots of controls that you can go through. Obviously, there's not really so much as, let's say, I don't know, a Kenwood or an Alpine head unit where you can go into loads of different functions straight off the bat. It's very, very minimalistic. So this is kind of aimed at someone that doesn't want too much to look at just a very simple and easy to use head unit. So if we connect up a phone, we can show you the CarPlay and the Android Auto working, and then we'll go through some settings and show you the audio settings as well. Okay, so I have my Android phone here. We're gonna show you how to connect up an Android phone for Android Auto and then music streaming and so on. So once you have your phone ready, you go into settings, and then you can go into device connection. You can tap add new device, and then with your phone, you're gonna swipe down from the top, press and hold the Bluetooth button, and then go into details. And then scroll past the 100 different devices that I have connected. And then you should have XAV 9550ES. Tap on that. There we go. 
go, so pair and pair. Give that a second to start up. There we go, it's asking if we want to start Android Auto, so we're going to allow contact sync over here and then start Android Auto. There we go, so once that's connected, you can then put your phone away, wait for the Android Auto to load up. It takes a second the first time you pair it, but then it's pretty quick after that. There you have it, so that's your home screen for Android Auto. So at the moment I've got Waze on one side and I've got Tidal on the other. So Tidal is a high-res music streaming, and then you've also got your other applications on this side that you're used to using, so like your phone book and whatnot, and then you can tap on here and that's gonna take you to the other apps that you can use throughout the unit. So if you want to, if you use Spotify for instance, you can obviously stream using Spotify. Like so. And then if you use Tidal, you can listen to music on one side and have your navigation, and then you can have your navigation and the home screen. So in terms of the performance on Android Auto, it's pretty standard across the board because it's a device essentially activated by your phone. Uh, it doesn't necessarily change throughout the head unit. So you, you, it's gonna be the same across the board, whether it's a Kenwood or a Pioneer or JVC or Alpine, for instance. These are all gonna be pretty much as quick as each other on Android Auto or CarPlay. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly show you how you can play high-res files wirelessly through Bluetooth or using Android Auto. This is just currently using Bluetooth, so if I go to my settings and go into Bluetooth, you can then go into the cog on this side, and then you can turn on LDAC, so use high quality audio. Turn that on, and there you have it. So you're playing LDAC and it says it at the bottom left there. Okay, so we have an iPhone here now, I'm just gonna show you how to connect that for Apple CarPlay. So what you do is you go to the settings, you go to Bluetooth, and then you start add new device on here, and then it's going to try and find it, hopefully. There we go, 9550ES, pair, pair, and our contact sync. So there we are, we've got Apple CarPlay. So it's the same kind of concept, obviously just laid out in a different format. So you've got your Apple Maps, you've got your contacts and your different sources on that side, and then you can go through and choose what app you want to use. It's the same kind of concept. Obviously, you can use your Spotify, you can use Tidal as well. So in terms of the screen responsiveness, like I said on the Android Auto, it's the same kind of concept. You, it's very, very touch responsive, as are, are most of them. I think it's more the screen that makes a difference. So if you had a, a stereo with a resistive touch screen, you're gonna find it's a little bit less responsive and a little bit kind of more slow and sluggish. Uh, but this is very, very touch responsive. You're gonna go through and be able to use all your apps nice and easily. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly run through the audio settings as obviously this is a high res device. You can do quite a lot in terms of the audio settings. So you click on your settings icon, you can go into sound. Then you have all of your audio settings in front of you. So you have EQ, so you can then Change this so you have your 14 band standard EQ and then you can go into EQ adjust and adjust that up or down as you need to, like that. And you can save that as a preset, custom one or custom two. We can then go back. You have a few presets that you can choose from, so jazz, dance, whatever kind of music you listen to. It's the same concept for a lot of different stereos or you can turn that off completely. You have your subwoofer level adjustment, so you can turn the subwoofer on or off through this and then adjust the level of that from there. This is your listening position, so this is essentially time alignment. Uh, so you have six way time alignment on this device, so you can do preset time alignment on this, so for your listening position, or you can adjust it and set it yourself down to minute measurements. So you can set it as centimeters or inches, whichever way you prefer measuring and then you can choose what your measurements are. This has also vinyl processor. 
So recreate the warm, rich playback of a record on a turntable. So this is just like a novelty feature that they've added to this device. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are listening to vinyls and stuff nowadays, so you can turn that on if you prefer that sound, then you can leave that on. Then you have advanced settings. So you can change the subwoofer output to left and right stereo if you have two, or if you have one or you just want it to be in mono, then you can have it in summed mono or stereo. Crossover settings, you have front, rear or subwoofer, so you can change that specifically. And then you have a parametric EQ, which is a little bit more customizable than a standard EQ. And you have each individual speaker on that EQ. So you can EQ the right side different to the left side if you need to. So if you wanted to change the front left, for instance, you could then tap on the front left. And then let's say you wanted to boost, I don't know, 500 Hertz. Let's pull that up. And then let's say you wanted to change a Q factor, which narrows or widens the band. So you can change that to go higher, which makes it more narrow. As you can see, the slope becomes more narrow. Or you can make it less, which becomes wider, which then, as you can see, starts to pull up 200 and 1000 hertz. And you can change the gain manually rather than doing it using your finger. And then you can change the specific frequency that you would like. So it's very, very technical. You can really go into the audio settings if you need to. Um, you can also change the speaker output. So if you want to save that, for just the front left, or you want to save it for all of them, you can do. And then lastly, you have speaker configuration. So if you're doing a front and rear setup, that's what you'd set it as. If you're doing a active front end, then you can go front two way and you can select that. Please confirm you want to change the speaker configuration mode, yes. And then what you can do is you can change the crossover. So you have your subwoofer crossover, your mid, your, your mid high pass, sorry, your mid low pass, and then your high. So that's essentially you can set that as a band pass, so you can have that 63 hertz, and then you can change that to be, uh, let's say we want it at four kilohertz, and then your high frequency, you can turn that up. So you can see the crossover changing. Okay, so that's it for the audio settings. Now obviously you have a lot of other settings you can go through. You can change the background of the unit by going into customize and then wallpaper select. So you can have uh, a few different of the uh, preset backgrounds or you can download your own through USB. And then you can change the custom key. So the custom key, obviously number one is home and number two is mute. So the custom key isn't that easy to spot. You wouldn't, essentially a custom key is like one of these buttons, but it's actually these two little lights here. So you can change what they do. So let's say you want that to be source change for instance. And then you want that one to be, I don't know, volume up, whatever you want to set it as. So let's go home, let's go to DAB. Then let's say we want to change the source to something else, and it's going to go to radio, or you can tap it a few times to go to double radio, normal double radio. Tap home, we can go to Bluetooth, you can tap it again, and go back to radio. And then let's say we want to turn the volume up by using this one. Just tap that. So it's very customizable, this head unit, probably one of the most customizable Sony units I've seen to date, and definitely one of the most high tech in terms of the audio settings. So it's good to see that. Um, so yeah, definitely a very, very good head unit and one to look out for. So guys, that was the overview of the brand new Sony XAV9550ES. Now remember, ES stands for Elevated Standard, which is Sony's flagship range of products. They don't just do head units in this range, they do speakers, they do amplifiers, they do subwoofers. So you can get a whole package of the Sony ES range if that's something you're after, and we sell it all on our website, coralysecurity.com. Now, this is a fantastic unit. Obviously, this is a floating screen with a singled in body. So bear that in mind when it comes to your vehicle and your application. You will need a singled in location uh, to be able to slot this in. And then obviously, this is a floating screen, meaning it, it will protrude from the dash, but obviously you do have adjustment there as well. This being one of their highest quality head units, this will stream the best audio quality you've got. So this being able to stream high res audio means you can get the best quality sound from this and you've got all of those audio adjustments such as your crossovers, your EQ, parametric EQ, and all of those kind of things. You, you can really get a system to sound great with this head unit. 
Okay guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.